It's time for another test and a bunch of science. I stuck an EDF in a tube and filled it with water. When I was getting ready to do this video, I did a little bit of research on the dangers that are associated with trying to swim like Aquaman. And the human body is not especially resilient to the pressure of water when you start going deep. If there's a 58 PSI pressure differential, your body basically squishes Get the squish, just like grip. And you cease to be alive. But your eardrums can rupture at really low pressures, just a couple PSI. But they're guaranteed to rupture once you hit 15 PSI. How deep in the water do you have to go to hit 15 PSI? 33 feet. And at the speed that I want to swim like Aquaman, that takes 1.5 seconds. So if you don't equalize, you implode your ears. And then you have to worry about the nitrogen problems. Have you ever heard of the bends? And then I'm going to have EDFs on my legs, so what if they decide to spontaneously disassemble and uh, remove the lower parts of my legs. I'm kind of attached to them. <sighs> Get it? And when I reach top speed, the amount of thrust that's coming out is going to be equal to the amount of force that's pushing back on me. The point is, everything about this project is going to be kind of dangerous. But I'm still going to do my best to swim as fast as possible so that I can backflip out of the water like a majestic unicorn dolphin. Or, or just jump out like a regular dolphin. I've never seen anybody do that and I feel like it would be pretty fantastic. Especially when I have a suit on that makes me look like Aquaman. I don't think there's anything cooler than that. The only reasonable power source to use in the water is electricity because you don't have any air for you to burn a fuel. So normal motors are out and rocket motors are out because they don't last long enough. With current technology, there's really only one viable source of thrust underwater and that's by using electricity with electric motors to drive you forward. And brushless motors aren't affected by water. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to go very fast underwater with an EDF that's this size, but I put this rig together to test an EDF in the water. I got a bunch of four inch PVC parts and some plexiglass. And then I heat formed the plexiglass to one of the pipes. And then I cut out this window so you can actually see what's going on. And then I glued it all together. And it was at that point that I realized that the build didn't matter. So I decided to skip it and just show you how it works. This moves very freely. It's on a bunch of greased washers. The EDF is the same distance from the pivot point as where this pushes on the scale. So I'll get an accurate reading of how much thrust this is creating while it's in the water. Yep. And the reason it's in a loop is so that I can measure how much the thrust changes as the speed of the water increases. There's obviously going to be more drag on this, but the angle of attack of the blades should be more efficient once the water starts to pick up speed. Oh yeah. And I forgot, I ran it in the air and it made 0 0.6, 0 0.68 pounds of thrust. Not too bad. Let's see what happens. Okay. Didn't like that. That speed controller is cooked. I got to do it again anyway, because the camera wasn't recording that was looking at the scale. Good thing I got extras. Pop this on and try it again. I feel like I do need to mention that the KV rating on this is really high, but you multiply that by the volts and you get the RPMs that it wants to go maximum, theoretically. Point is, stuff spins slow in water and this thing wants to go super fast, like it's in the air. So I planned on burning up speed controllers. Okay, here we go, try number two. I'm gonna go a little less hard on the throttle and see if the thrust increases as the water speed increases. And you can watch with me, because the camera's... Constant speed. Thrust is going up. Let's put some more into it. Speed controller's getting hot. Let's see how much thrust I can get. Now the speed controller's hot. That is, that's hot. I don't think the water can possibly carry enough momentum the whole way around this pipe to make this EDF actually function efficiently because it's trying to spin too fast. So let's talk about how props work. That is fun though. My little test rig did do its job. It showed that if the water speed increases, then the ducted fan is slightly more efficient at creating thrust, but only to a certain point because those blades are meant to work in air, which is very compressible and water is not. They're airfoil shaped, 
which does not work in water. The physics of a boat propeller are completely different. And it's not just a screw that spins through the water, the blades on propellers are actually pretty advanced. You need to cup a little bit and the angle needs to change and there's rake and then they have a slight downturn at the bottom and there's all these fancy things that go on with propellers to make them really efficient. Basically what they're doing is they're trying to create an area of high pressure and then low pressure here. And obviously that's going to push on the propeller and move the boat forward. But then there's all kinds of other crazy technology that goes into it. But I'm not gonna use open propellers, I'm gonna use ducted ones. And the physics behind a ducted propeller are different. You have contained water. So certain things that are on boat propellers you don't need when it's in a tube, you know? And I have an example. This is an impeller from a stand-up jet ski and you can see that the blades are flat. There's no cupping, there's no craziness. They have straight blades on the front because that helps cut into the water. But this actually is probably the most efficient design for what I wanna do. I assume the engineers that made this aftermarket impeller know more about it than I do. The problem is I can't seem to find an equivalent that's made out of plastic or designed to put onto a brushless motor that I'm gonna to strap to my legs. And I need them to be opposite each other. One to spin one way and one to spin the other. That way if there's two on each leg, the torque will cancel out and it won't try to twist my leg around because I plan on having a fair amount of power. So try not to break my legs. But on a more interesting note, and I'll put a link to the math in the description, I found somebody that had done the math for how much drag the human body has in water. And I thought I was gonna to have to go out to the lake and drag behind a friend's boat on a rope and then measure how much pull there was on the rope to figure out how much resistance there would be when I was in the water. Point is, that made it really easy to calculate how much force I'm gonna need to propel myself to a specific speed, given that their equations were accurate. But they seem like it, and provided that you're very slick in the water with this system, you're gonna need at least 36 pounds of thrust to get you to six miles an hour. And you'll see that the amount of drag goes up exponentially. As you get faster, the amount of thrust that you need becomes astronomically higher. At 10 miles an hour, you need 116 pounds of thrust, provided that you have very little drag. And at 15 miles an hour, you need 290 pounds of thrust. I don't know how I feel about 290 pounds of thrust. It's a lot. But if I jumped straight out of the water at 15 miles an hour, I would be able to jump like a dolphin. And I did the math for that. And without regard to air resistance, I would be able to jump seven and a half feet out of the water from the point that I stopped creating thrust, which would be my feet. So my feet would get seven and a half feet out of the water, which would be awesome. But if I could reach 20 miles an hour, which is how fast dolphins actually swim, and I jumped straight out of the water, I'd be able to reach a height of 13 and a half feet, which would be pretty fantastic. You ever seen those dolphin shows where the dolphin flies up and pokes the ball with his nose? How cool would it be to be able to do that? 13 and a half feet is enough to jump out of the water and land on somebody's roof on a one-story house. Can't tell me that wouldn't be cool. But knowing that information, I know what I need to get to be able to accomplish it, because I know how much thrust I'm going to have to create. That'll translate to how much power I need in the motors. And I'll be able to figure out what the angle of the impeller blades should be, assuming 70%, well, you're supposed to assume 80% efficiency, but I'm gonna assume that whatever I come up with for my impeller is probably only gonna reach 70% efficiency. So I calculate that. And that's actually really easy to do because you know your RPMs that your motor is gonna try to run at. So you calculate for less than peak RPM because it's never gonna reach that. And then you take the angle of the prop blade and you can extrapolate that by measuring the circumference and drawing a line at the same angle as the impeller blades and then wherever that stops, you've got your distance. That's how much distance you cover in one revolution. And then you take that revolution and you extrapolate with your RPM. And then you know how fast you're gonna go. It's all just little conversions, but I can use math. And I already did the math and the parts that I need are really expensive. And I haven't been able to find anybody that actually has the motors and parts yet. So as soon as I can find that stuff, I've wanted to do this since 2014 because I had the idea when I watched Peter Serple when he was still at flight test, do a demonstration on waterproofing brushless motors and putting your electronics in water and having it still work. See the motor? That still works. Servo? That still works. And when I saw that, I was like, ooh, I could make Aquaman thrusters, but I never got around to it. But now is the perfect time to do it. And I know a lot of other people have done it, like Peter Sripple, because he got those T100 thrusters from some company. Ruloff Maker did it, kind of. Jay Laser kind of did it. And Eclectical Engineering did it. And there's supposed to be companies that are coming out with stuff like that that have done it. But I don't care, because I'm going to do it better. And I'm going to look like Aquaman. And I'm going to go faster. And I'm going to jump higher. And it's going to be awesome. Yep. The problem is I either need to have things made custom for it or find them. You can't just make this stuff custom with like an angle grinder and a chunk of plastic in your garage until I get that stuff. I'm gonna have to put this project on hold a little bit, but I'm gonna turn myself into a different superhero and that project is gonna be... <laughs> It's gonna be great. So make sure you subscribe to catch that one and like the video and all, whatever. Thanks for watching.
Did I forget anything? The fastest underwater personal, the fastest thing you can take underwater with you that makes you swim real fast is this thing that's like half the size of a jet ski that you hold out in front of you. It's made in Germany. It's called the Sea Bob, but it's gigantic and it drags you through the water. It does 12.4 miles per hour underwater and it uses 4.5 kilowatts to do that. At least that's what it says. Especially if they're lying about its top speed. It's probably with a child dragging behind it. So obviously I'm gonna need more than that. 